Welcome to the class on reinforcement learning. What does it mean to take an expectation over update steps? So this video represents a detour on batch rules, online rules and expectation steps over online rules. You remember in machine learning there's a loss function and the loss function varies as a function of the parameters of the network model. Suppose you have an initial value. If you do gradient descent, we move down. There might be a slight overshoot, but in the end, we land at the minimum. That's the final value. And you can think of this in a specific example. Uh, this is now the example where we have uh, about 20 data points. Sort of there are quite a few data points here, uh, very few data points here, and then data points here and there. And our task is to approximate this by some function, by a linear function, uh, the output y should be a function, linear function of x, a times x plus b. And suppose now that I plot here on my loss function, the parameter b, and uh, I start with b equals zero, and then as I move down, this linear function, the dashed line here, starts to move. B gets larger, which means it moves upwards here on the vertical axis and gets even larger. It gets larger. There might be an overshoot and then say this is the final solution. So what I do here is gradient descent in batch mode. I go down the surface and at some point I will be at the minimum. And once I'm at the minimum, I'm stuck. I have found the final value. So let's just formalize this a little bit further. In general, in machine learning, parameters are called theta. The specific parameters here are A and B. Gradient descent means that I move down, negative gradient, I move down on the loss surface. Alpha is my learning rate or learning parameter. And uh, the specific case for the parameter B would be this instantiations for this linear case that we have seen. I start at b equals zero down here, and then I move along until I found the final position. What I describe here is an iterative update rule, and that is batch update. I have always my old value. I change it by delta b. That was the formula here on the left hand side. And then this b becomes the old variable and I iterate and I do this, of course, also for a. Now, this kind of iterative algorithm means that I actually take the gradient at the old variable, at the old value of the parameter theta, and uh, then I update to get the new variable by changing by this amount delta theta. So if now, if this change delta theta is zero, then obviously the parameter no longer changes. There's no change in the update formula. And since we have delta theta defined as the gradient of the loss function, that means we are at a local minimum, the gradient is flat. We are at the local minimum of this loss function. What I described is the batch update rule. Batch update means in an empirical machine learning setting that I have a loss function. The loss function is the sum over all big N data points and the little l is the loss per data point. For example, in our case, we have had a linear function f and we assumed a quadratic loss function and this is the big L that I have shown on the previous slide. Now, the update in the specific case is I take the gradient, but since this operation here is linear, I can move the gradient inside after the sum. Now, more formally, the loss function is the expectation across all data points with this little function. And expectation is a linear operation. If I take the derivative and my update rule, then again, 
I can shift this derivative inside the expectation. That's completely analogous to what I did on the right hand side with the finite sum. What does this expectation really mean? This expectation means I integrate out all possible combination of input output pairs with the correct statistical weight p of x, y. And now you can do the gradient descent again and you see the same applies. So this is just a rewrite um, of the expectation. You see that I have the local gradient per data point and then it's averaged over all possible combination x and y. So let's now compare this formal expectation with what we had before. You see that the expectation sign is completely equivalent to averaging over data points, over many data points. The expectation becomes exact in exact becomes the exact equivalent in the limit that the number of data points goes to infinity. So if I have enough data points, then I evaluate the expectation. Let's work this out. So here on the left hand side, the formal expectation of the update, which is the average of all possible combinations of input and output pairs. These possible combinations are shown in the XY graph below as a density in a specific implementation, we would draw a specific number of points, say n data points with appropriate statistical weights. So I draw many data points in this region and fewer data points out here. And uh, this allows me to convert this statistical formulation with expectations into a simulation with a large number of data points. And now with this large number of data points, I can replace this expectation of the update rule with this summation over this very large number of data points. So the expectation really, we will find the expectation back in the limit of number of data points going to infinity. So what I have shown is that I have an update rule. I can write it either as local gradients per data point and then take the expectation over these or local gradients for each data points and then take the, li take the limit of a very large number of data point I average over infinitely large number, num large number of data points. And in both cases, if the parameter doesn't change, n to infinity, that means theta doesn't change, that means we are at the local minimum and this local minimum is at the last parameter ahead at which no update happened. And that means also that this old parameter is, this parameter here is the optimal parameter in the statistical sense, in the sense of finding the minimum of the loss in with expectation signs. So this was batch rule batch rule with a large number of samples. What happens with an online rule? Basically what happens is that we cut out the sum. Online means I take one data point at a time, so the sum has disappeared, and I update after each data point. The update formula, the algorithm looks the same, but the update happens after each single data point. So I now go down in my loss learned landscape I start somewhere, I go down, I go down, I may, might overshoot, I go back and I approach the minimum. But then because I have an online update rule, I just continue forever. So I will not end up in the minimum once and for all, but it will jitter forever. So in, with the online rule, I update up after each data point. And I have this jitter that happens forever. Now what I can do and what is relevant for this class is the following. I can take this update rule per data point and I can ask the question, well, what happens typically or what is the expectation of this online update rule, expected online update, while I keep the parameter frozen? So 
I did my online update, I'm at a certain moment, and I say this is now my current theta old, and now I ask, let's suppose, I, try, I would try out different things, where would I go on average? So I update for frozen theta old, and what I described corresponds to saying I take the expectation over this delta theta. Now, the conclusion is, if you look at this formula, this expected update of the online rule is identical to the batch update with infinite number of data points. So, the online update has jitter, but the expected update has no jitter because it's like infinite data batch update. So on the left-hand side, consider the batch rule with n to infinity. The conclusion that we saw before is if there's no change anymore, delta theta equals zero, then theta doesn't change. There's a local minimum at my value theta old. And for n to infinity, that's also the optimum, the optimal local minimum. Now with the online rule, it jitters forever. However, if by chance theta old is such that the expectation of the update is zero, the expectation is zero, then there is a local minimum at theta old. Local minimum in the sense that it's the local optimum. So the expectation can show that it's a local optimum, but my online update steps might still kick me out again. So I continue to jitter forever. Now there's a different view and a completely different argument. It's related, but really very different. And that means I can also look at the temporal means, mean. So I said the data point, so the solution jitters always. So can we say that the mean of all these jittered positions is the correct one? And the answer is sometimes, sometimes it's optimal. Why only sometimes? Well, it's optimal if the function is symmetric. But here I have a situation on the right-hand side where we say, suppose I'm here and I take a gradient. The gradient is big, so make a, I make a big step. And then I'm here, but here the gradient is small, so I make a small spec, uh, step. So overall, the mean will be shifted a little bit to the left compared to the true minimum. So asymmetric updates, I don't need to argue with gradients. Asymmetric updates is the shift, if I move a little bit to the left, is the, is, is the update as big as if I were to move the same amount to the right. Then it, the, the, the temporal mean is correct. But if, the temp, if I have asymmetric updates, then the temporal mean is not optimal. And this brings us to the final quiz. We go point by point. I read the text with a batch rule and small learning rate. I sometimes reach a local minimum without remaining parameter jitter. Yes or no? With a batch rule at the local minimum, I never have any remaining parameter jitter. Yes or no? With an online rule at the local minimum, I never have any remaining parameter jitter. Yes or no? With an online rule at the local minimum, the expectation of the online update steps vanishes. Yes or no? The expectation of the online update step is equivalent to a very large batch. Very large means number of data points n to infinity. Yes or no? With an online rule jittering around the minimum, 
the temporal mean is guaranteed to be at the location of the minimum. Yes or no? 